Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we head back to Canada. There's a little bit more footage from our trip to Canada. So Toby and I went across the country last year and we went through Michigan and then we went to Canada where we met Nigel in the Bonsai Zone. Hey, also Jay, Jay was there from Blue Jay Bonsai. He's got a little bit of a cameo in this. So don't close your eyes and don't skip to the end. We had a blast and this footage here is my son Toby kind of capturing behind the scenes with no direction from me or Nigel or Jay for that matter. He was just shooting because that's what he and I do a lot on these location shoots, right? So this is kind of, um, uh, Nigel's camera was on sometimes, sometimes it was off. We were making his show and of course if you want to see that episode in its full entirety from Nigel in the Bonsai Zone, well yeah, check up there, that'll be the link or possibly down in the description, right? So we get started off with the watering can because that in itself is worth the trip to Canada, eh? And it has that little squeak of sound and then the yeah. water comes out of there. Sometimes with fresh soil you can hear them, they're like Rice Krispies, the yeah. soil absorbing the water, which is kind of cool. Yeah, very, very cool. We got our little uh, fisherman there. Yeah. Got Look at that, him. getting a little water there to get him cooled off with the snake <laughs> there in the river. <laughs> Nice. That was from Emily the snake. The snake? Yeah, <laughs> uh, from Bonsai Science, the channel. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this is fantastic. And how much water does this hold? Uh, I think it's two and a half liters. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get the... Yeah, you gotta hold it up with the one hand. There you go. There it is. There you go. This is fabulous. I need to get me one of these. Yeah, where do you get your hands on one of those? Rooster agrees. I don't know where they got it from. It. Uh, all I know is they're very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at, that was my dream is to always get a copper watering can. And I kept looking at the prices of them and I thought, no, that's out of reach. That's out of reach. There we go. So one of the advantages of turning 60 and having a good bunch of friends. Look at that. <laughs> that is that is a beautiful uh, specimen. It's called C-Tripio. 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 One of the viewers named it. That's great. C it looks like C-Tripio from Star Wars. Yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> Stunning. Now after messing around and looking at the trees, getting the tour, going inside and outside of the greenhouse, watering with the fancy watering can, it came down to taping the show for Nigel and the Bonsai Zone. So again, check that out on Nigel's channel. But right now it's the behind the stage footage and, and not a whole lot of editing here. This is just what Toby caught. I took a couple of the bumps and bruises out, but there's a lot of times where he goes from him, Nigel, to me and back and I left some of that in there. This is just kind of, it's really kind of fun. It's almost like he captured us just being Nigel and Dave. And we talked YouTube, we talked Bonsai, and there's some really good nuggets of information here. I think you'll really enjoy this. So let's get right back out there, back in the Bonsai zone with the one and only Nigel Saunders. I hope you enjoy. At the end, I say, thanks for joining me in the Bonsai zone, and then I freeze, and then I did the music. So uh, after freeze. I say that, we just kind of freeze. Uh, <laughs> but that'll be a long time away. <laughs> All right, here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> Wait for the chickens to be quiet. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is Ficus Friday once again, and I have a very special guest in the Bonsai Zone, Dave from the YouTube channel, Dave's Bonsai. Hi. Hi Dave, how's it going? It's great, thank you so much for having me. It's so surreal to see you in person. It's just bizarre. It's a uh, I'm almost kind of like starstruck or something. It, it's, it's just strange. I'm in the zone. I'm starstruck. <laughs> Nigel mentioned it was surreal for him to be with here, me with him in the bonsai zone, and it's surreal that I'm holding the uh, the root spreader. <laughs> I've got the little tiny root rake that we try to get those uh, 360 degree radial root patterns in all his videos, and I'm holding that. I think we can go home now, Toby. It's like a rite of passage. <laughs> it was God. Scott right. Winter held it for the first time. <laughs> he says, it's like holy, the Holy Grail That's or something. That's right. It's, it's the Holy Grail. Yeah. This is the Holy Grail of the Bonsai Zone. I'm going to retire that tool soon. 
Are you really? Yeah, yeah. I, I've noticed over the years, it used to be, the, ta the tangs used to be about this long. Really? And over, well, 25 years of root raking, it's It's like water over slowly, the rock on a shoreline. It, it is slowly wearing it away. It's that, still got lots of life in it, but. Yeah, um, fantastic. I can't believe they were longer, and that's just. Yeah. Just all those years of raking, yeah. it just wears them out slowly. That's that's amazing. Uh, what am I going to say? Okay, I'll explain what my goal is in pruning. Okay, that's goal often missed with people. Goal in pruning. They, they do a video where I'm going to trim my tree, but they never explain why they're trimming it or what their goal is. Like, yeah, um, which is important because even the professionals miss that. They sure. don't. They That's never a good show point. you what their vision of the tree is. They, yeah. they like, they do all the work, but they never really explain the purpose of what they're doing. Yeah, and that's a great point. Yeah, I, I, it makes me think about what I do. To establish yeah, what, the shape, we get more ramification, right. uh, taper, movement to the branches. And yeah, yeah so. important stuff, I agree. So I'll try and explain that now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I, what I wanted to bring you, and I don't know if anyone has ever done that for you, but early in, the, early in my watching all your episodes, I wanted to have a shirt that says, um, was it so, so here we go yeah <laughs> just like that just like a big cut here coming here, up here we go dot here dot dot go. or in the back just like that because <laughs> that's your phrase that's a lot of people ask me why I don't sell merch on my channel and I tell them I'm not a t-shirt salesman <laughs> I, I I run the channel to show progression of trees, oh, trees. Yeah. Uh, show how a tree can go from a seed or a, something insignificant to something yeah. hopefully yeah. someday significant absolutely and, I mean, I've done that with my Sarissa. I, I went from a tiny cutting to something that uh, was a contender for best tree of the show at a in, Toronto, in Toronto. Yeah. which I was really, uh, I was so happy they mentioned my tree. I was, I, I didn't expect it because yeah. my tree was so small compared to all the other ones yeah. in the show. And I thought, you know, everyone, it, I, I was just- But it just evoked, that tree just evokes so much, I think, for so many people. It, it is yeah. one of my favorites. And I just like love that it was small and got attention. honor that it, someone noticed yeah, it. Absolutely. It was kind of cool. You can see the tree is really bushy now. So obviously I want to prune it back to size, but by pruning it back, you're also getting taper in the branches. You're getting ramification. So the one branch will divide into two after pruning. You'll also get movement. So, you know, a straight branch, you cut it back, the new branches grow in at a slightly different angle. So you get movement, taper, and compactness, and everything you want in a bonsai. So that's the goal of today is to reduce this tree back, set it up for the next growth period. You just keep repeating the process and slowly over the years, these branches get thicker and they have this fantastic character to them because they're clip and grow that they get subtle movement in them, subtle taper, scarring, they get everything that you need in. A miniature tree so if you want this branch to come out the back you prune it to a leaf that's facing out the back if you want it to come out to the front you prune it to a leaf that's facing out the front if you want it to bend down you prune it just ahead of a downward facing leaf if you want it to go vertically to a leaf that's facing upwards so that's called directional pruning and that's what we'll be doing so I think just ahead of that that leaf all right I'll cut for a second and we'll get a close up. All right, thanks. Here's the quick release, Toby. So you just, yeah, you just push down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had one like that where Real it was just nice. a little lever. Yeah, yeah super yeah, nice. Real nice. All right, here we go. This isn't a big cut, is it, Dave? It's not a big cut. <laughs> but, but, but here we go. Yeah. So we're going to grow and we're going to keep this that one. That was the leaf right yeah. there, yeah. So. Yeah, perfect. Oh, there we go. A little bit for dieback. A little bit for dieback. There There's the go. first branch cut. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Many more to go. We might have to check my blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, we might as well start from the bottom. Let's just. Uh... I'm going to take off my glasses okay. for my better view here. Yeah. Like that. That's perfect. Go. All right. So now from the front, you can see you don't have those eye poker branches right. sticking straight out. Nice. Another philosophy I have is try and show each operation detailed, but only show it once because every other branch we're going to do the exact same thing. Evaluate yeah, which leaf we're going to pick. That becomes again a lot of work if you did it in, uh, I mean. Yeah, yeah. and people will get bored. bored. So they've yeah. seen 
that selection process. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of let's clean up this tree. Kind of a before and after almost. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's some things we discover along, along the, way. the way for yeah. sure. For sure. So unless there's something interesting, I'm gonna keep it yep. fairly short. <laughs> so you can see filming and doing bonsai takes at least twice as long, if not four or five times as long. Oh, if you were just doing the one thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I could get, I could have all my trees pruned up in like three or four days if I wanted, but yeah. And the thing I've learned is that um, because I try and show everything I do on video is that uh, it's taught me to wait. Like normally, just notice some, some scale here. Normally, uh, I would have pruned this before it got to this stage. It's a little longer than I would normally right. prune it, but I found it's better for the trees yeah. to grow them a little more than you think it needs to be and then prune them back. They get a little more vigor. So it's almost the benefit of having more trees even. Yeah, is that they allow more time to naturally grow. You're not always picking at them. Yeah. So they gain more vigor. And I think in a tropical climate, that's not important. Oh. Zombie apocalypse. Zombie apop apocalypse. Oh my God. In a tropical environment, you can keep pruning them. Yeah. They are under ideal growing conditions all the time. In Canada and Minnesota, you can't do that. You've got that nine months of winter that this tree has got to make it through <laughs> somehow. It's only eight, Nigel. Come on. Okay, eight. And eight. <laughs> but it has to have enough vigor to get through the winter. So yeah. you can't, like they in the tropics, they'll defoliate ficus three or four times a season. Oh. Here, we do it like maybe every other year <laughs> that's pushing it that's pushing it so yeah. we got to be more careful here uh-huh so anyway on this branch um I, I would keep it growing downwards all these lower branches should be cascading or horizontal and then as we go up they're going to get more and more vertical so all these lower branches we're pruning to kind of downward facing leaves so on this we have a choice there's two downward facing leaves so i would prune just above those two that will get it divided into two divided and they'll both be kind of growing horizontal or downwards. All right. Yeah. Glass is coming off. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. There's another branch here. You can see it's being pruned and pruned. Yep. Um, it's not really ready. It hasn't grown that much. So I, I wouldn't even touch this just, branch. Just leave it alone. It's got some new growth at the tip, but that's it. So, mm -hmm. um, we could clean up a stub on there. There's an old pruning stub. That's all I would do. Yeah, perfect. Um, I'll let you pick the next step branch, Dave, and you can explain to me where you're gonna prune it and why. <laughs> <laughs> where I'm gonna prune it and why. Yeah. All right, well, the glasses definitely have to come off then. Um, the next branch. Pressure is intense. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were working on the bottom, so we have okay. We that. have this uh, branch that really split out really early from the trunk. Yeah, it's a really it's this, almost this two branches coming from one two spot. Two coming from it? one spot. Um, so I would like to reduce that to one branch. Uh, okay. So first of all, we need to pick our best branch. So you can. And I'm looking at the front. Yeah. So you pick which one's the best. It doesn't have to be the older one. It can be if that yeah. new one's a better direction, we replace the older one with the new one. But so the one branch that's closest to us in the front here, yeah. the branch right here, is really straight. Yeah. Absolutely no movement. Yeah. It's closer to us. The other one has kind of a nice little curve, so it's horizontal. Yeah. But it has movement. It's got a little bit of that slight movement. So when you look at those two branches, and then. Even the even the growth behind it has movement. So this yeah. one swoops down and then goes towards the back. There's two movements in that uh, original older growth, which is a plus. Isn't lends it? me to want to cut that one off. I think in so my too. first initial thought. And another reason I think is that just above this new branch, you've got another older branch, whereas this one has more of a, a spot of sunlight, whereas this one's growing directly right under underneath the other that one. one. That's competing. So I yeah I agree with that decision. Prune that, that one new off. shoot right off. Right off. There we go. There. Yeah. That looks good. I'm happy with the decision. Are you okay with it? That looks good. That All looks right. really good. These two branches are starting to cross one they're another. Kind of, yeah, they're yeah. kind of in the same plane and they're, sort of interfering with each other. They're kind of going other. the same direction already, but now they're going to do this and cross. We almost have a double, yeah. a double negative there, if you will. Exactly. 
And if I look at the two branches from the front, again, this one's showing more movement that you can see. Yeah. And this one, this one kind of pops up into view more. This one's a little more distant. So if I want to see this branch, I would keep this one. If I want it to be more subtle, I would keep that one. Now, um, my feeling on this yeah. is that uh, we've got three different planes of branches. There's a lower one, a middle one, and an upper one. Yep. If we remove the middle one, we've got more space between the branches. Sure. Which is kind of nice because I find the lower one and the middle one are too close together from the front view. Sure. So even though it is the better branch. Yeah, in this case. I think the back one also, these two branches are almost kind of growing parallel, mm -hmm. whereas the back one splays out more. Yeah. So I think we cut even this one though the middle instead. one is the better branch, better developed, is a little more movement and taper. I think the back one is the, the stronger, a better position. Better, so yeah. This is a better, case, better for the length of the tree. Yeah. Not right now, this second, but it will be better. In the It'll end. be better in the future. And this is part of clip and grow is that you're always going to be given new opportunities of new shoots and branches coming out. Yeah. And when you get a branch going a better direction than an older one, you take off the older one yeah. and develop the newer one. And sure. eventually, you get these branches that are all sorted out really nice. Yeah. And Because you got to pick and choose. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to take this one completely off then. Yeah, I, I agree with that, I think. And there we go. There goes that one. So now... From the front, you can see that separation between the yeah. branches, and it, it looks right. a little we're, more spacious. We're not fighting to actually see what's back there either. We just really yeah. see what's in front of us, and it's two really nice branches right now. Yeah, and so. sometimes you see a tree in nature, and there's just all these branches on it, and it's in bonsai, we almost have to simplify it for your eye to take in sure. to see the branches. Yeah. So it's, yeah, sometimes the trees have to be simplified a bit to look good. So this one, you can see it's coming straight out at the viewer. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have two choices. We can prune it off or we can sort of, uh, is there a choice? Uh, it's There's a little tiny one in there, Yeah. which is insignificant, but you're talking about this I think bifurcation area there, right? Where it's my splits feeling is both of these have to come off. They're just too straight out front. Yeah. I think this is a better branch, and then you develop some branches oh, coming off there. of that. Yeah. So we take this little tiny stub off yeah. here. There's this little growth right in here. Yeah. And that comes off. These new little shoots are good if you get them in the right place. <laughs> and then we cut that one off. Yeah. And then there's a stub we can clean up there. Yeah. Well, a stub from before. Yeah. All right. And. Let's just go. look at the front now. There's a look at the front. So we've gotten rid of all those branches going straight out towards the front of the tree. You want them off to the side so you can kind of look at the trunk without, they yeah. call them eye poker branches and yeah. they're kind of, yeah, they, they look at the tree, they're kind of poking in the eye. Yeah. It's just, not, as, not as pleasing. No, I, I don't know what the reason is, but it just, yeah, not so good. Yeah, I do, and I think I, what what stood out there was when you said if we cut it out here it's too long it's still too long right and i know it's a young branch and it doesn't have a great amount of taper yet but if we kept it up here it'd be just long and straight and that's yeah. going to help a little bit more movement and hopefully thicken it up with the next set of growth yeah i would imagine. i think so so we go right about there yeah i think so big cut big cut here of this tree <laughs> no big cuts of this tree well there might be but you never know um that looks better doesn't it yeah it's now, maybe in the future that whole branch can come off, and I wonder if we should take it off now. Because I I'm developing the trunk here, and then the leader of this other branch is coming off here, which is each side of the viewer, and I'm wondering if we should just remove that whole branch uh, and develop this as the that leader side. of the branch, and then we've got this one here. This one's kind of in it's between. It's competing against this someday in, if it gets In the shadow there. of that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Let's take it off. Take it off. If in doubt, Cut Take it, it out. out. <laughs> Cut it out. Yeah, be careful. There's an area root there that we'll kind of keep. Yeah. And then we now just cut the whole thing it out. It looks better. It, it looks yeah. better. It's yeah. cleaner. It's a nicer front, isn't it? Yeah. Without that. And I, I think it's nice to make that first cut. In the moment you made that first cut, it didn't take you long to say, no, I think we really should just take the whole thing off. Yeah. But you waited. You 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 gave yourself that time to think about it a little bit longer. Yeah. I, I, one thing on trees I don't like is if you get the flat front. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have some branches coming out the front of the tree. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it looks like in the side view, you know, it's sheared at the front and it looks funny. It's all yeah. dimensional around the back and there's right. nothing coming out the front. So you have to, all these branches that are coming off to the side, you've got to develop them. Yeah. And you'll have a bit of a hole in the canopy, but you fill it in eventually. But you don't want major branches shooting straight out the front of the tree. So For sure. Yeah, I think that looks better. Yeah. Um, and then off of this branch, we, we've got a shoot at the back here which I'm not liking. Are you liking that, Dave? Not at all. No, no. I, I think that's got to come right off. That's a that's a complete, just quick quick job right there. Yeah. No, not, not much thought on that one. Yeah. No. So you can see on a tree like this, even though it's small, there's all these decisions you make. And these decisions build up over time. You can imagine 10 years from now, each decision you make affects the tree. And over time, all these decisions you make build this fantastic tree up in the future, hopefully. And uh, that's what we're doing today is making decisions. And the next time I prune it, I make more decisions. And it becomes an art form. Uh, everyone would prune this tree a little bit differently. And it becomes very personal that, you know, you make all these decisions on the tree. It's how you like it, how you envision the tree. And it becomes your personal piece of art. And mm -hmm. it's kind of cool in the future knowing that, you know, I remember that branch when it was just a little shoot, yeah. and now it's a fully developed branch. It's the perfect direction I want it and everything. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue pruning up this tree, and then we'll come back and have a look at it with it all compacted and branches selected, and it should be quite a change, I think. No sense filming all our... Well, <laughs> Nigel hours. put out an hour and a half video this time with Dave. <laughs> what? Yeah. I've had videos where I've spent an hour pruning a tree, and people say, oh, I love the long format. I just sat back it was relaxing for an hour watching yeah, yeah, every yeah. decision yeah and some people like it some people hate that, it that's right it, right it's and i think if you're in bonsai you're a fairly patient person so yeah some people will watch yeah every detail but, oh man sometimes i can't even watch it it's so boring exactly it's like, you, you gotta draw the line somewhere and then there's one going straight up the front here i it's okay um, it's in front of the one behind, but you know, as you rotate it, you get yeah, a little no, I, dimensionality. I don't, I don't mind that one. No, I think my perspective. Let's prune it above this leaf here, and it'll kind of splay out a bit. This right here? Yeah. There you go. Do you think? Maybe. We'll see when it grows. It's, yeah, it's something. Yeah, let's get this one pruned back. So we've got a left and a right. So let's go right above there. And we're getting pretty close here. It's almost time to turn the camera back on. Uh, we got one. Did we prune that one? We weren't going to touch that one because it wasn't growing. Yeah. This one wasn't growing. Yeah. I think. Let's have a look from the front and just see if there's anything okay. bothering us. We'll something do the, that, something we'll that stands do the out. Carnage cam. It's quite amazing. We're getting some good thick branches coming off it's now. Like Canada and USA came together to make a North American ficus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> North exactly American true. ficus. <laughs> I don't can see it with the black background. Won't say it, SNC loves these fly-ins, so I always do a fly-in for them. <laughs> I'm gonna have a personal connection to that tree now. <laughs> I gotta. You determine part of that tree's future. I gotta have this playlist number one on my viewing uh, options. The playlist <laughs> for this ficus. Right. Do you have playlists for all your trees? I do. Okay, that's good. I do. That's one I thing. Started I started that pretty early. Me too. Because of uh, you. I, uh, from watching other bonsai channels, they would show a video of a tree and say, yeah, I made a video on this four months ago. And then I thought, okay, oh, I'm gonna have to scroll <laughs> through everything. And sometimes that tree isn't the title of the video. It isn't, right. So, so now I, thought, I have a lot of playlists and it goes into multiple ones. Something getting dark, is it gonna rain? It looks it's like it's clouding up. go <laughs> that was fairly smooth I, yeah, it was, was a little jerky one right yeah that's great i need a slider don't i <laughs> slider. it would be nice to set up I, I need a slider <laughs> <laughs> yeah. find the slider i'm already working on red scissors come yeah. on one thing at a time guys take two 
that was a look at the tree all pruned up and I think it's looking really good. Do you agree, Dave? I really do. I do. You're starting to see the structure of the tree and we're building up these primary branches and secondary branches and they're starting to get taper movement and it's starting to look really good. It's uh, looking really miniature, this tree. And this tree isn't that old. I think it's maybe six, maybe seven years old from a grocery store ginseng ficus. So hmm. it's come a long way and it's still got a long way to go, but it's it's getting that core structure and design to it. And I think it's it's starting to look like something quite special, I think. It, it doesn't look like a, a regular run-of-the-mill ginseng ficus. So that is all today. I want to thank Dave for coming down and helping prune up the Vietnam-style ficus. It's been a delight. So that is all today for this fabulous Ficus Friday. I'm Nigel Saunders. I'm David Weiss. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. If Nigel will have me back out there to the Bonsai Zone, I will definitely make the trip out there again, with or without Toby. Now, I don't know if I can put Toby up to that kind of a trip again, at least not for a couple of years. But when I get back out there to the Bonsai Zone, I can't wait to hang with Nigel and Jay and the gang from uh, that part of the country, that part of the world, and we can have a lot of fun talking Bonsai, laughing, and having a good time. I hope you enjoyed some good information there. After watching it again, it was fun to reminisce for me, but then some really some neat information that uh, he was able to share when we talked about even YouTube stuff and uh, the trees and everything was just super, super fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. So that's going to wrap up the last and final, I believe, footage from the 2022 road trip, at least the Bonsai Zone portion. All right, hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and you know we're going to see each other very, very soon. <laughs>